Hey, what's going on? Jeff Lerner here. And today we're talking about something that a lot of us struggle with, uh, myself included, and that is food, namely um, eating too much of it or <laughs> eating the wrong, the wrong types of it. All right, so let's talk about it. Okay, so this is a subject that is near and dear to me um, in both wonderful ways and also really like troublesome ways that um, I have some, some dark history with. Food, right? This is like, if I'm being honest, this is my struggle. Um, you know, I don't have like, you know, I'm not, I don't struggle with like gambling. I don't struggle with, you know, like abusing animals or whatever things people struggle with but man i like struggle with food it has been a challenging piece of my life to get a grip and so i have studied what is behind food issues what are the the rules of, of food and psychologically what happens around food and how can we get a handle on food and what are what are what are the underlying issues that food issues are really about and what are the best practices for dealing with food in a you know sort of a practical way in terms of our life um, because it's like, I'm not alone. You know, I can take solace in that. At least I'm not the only one with struggles. I mean, just sadly look around, right? Especially here in the United States, look around. There's clearly a problem with food. There's a lot of people that are doing really horrible, toxic things to their body. And I mean, not to like be insensitive or undiplomatic, but nobody's making them do it at gunpoint. Like we're doing the work to kill ourselves, right? With food. So what's really going on? I mean, and I'm saying that with, with the empathy of like somebody who's been there. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about food struggles. First of all, uh, this concept of diet, right? This is, uh, dieta is actually the Greek word that is the origin, I think it's Greek, Greek or Latin, I don't know, dieta, it feels Greek to me. Anyway, this word, now I'm, I'm like totally lost. Latin, Greek, ugh, whatever. The, here's what I know. It means daily practice. The origin of the word diet is just daily practice. The origin of the word diet doesn't even have to do with food. It's daily practice, what you do every day. And I think that's really important because we in you know, modern Western infomercial culture have like just smashed this word diet into this destructive oblivion of a word that we use to, to, to really to almost to harm ourselves, like to, to put ourselves through this this process or to apply this, this behavior to our own life that is like so unnatural. It's anything but a daily practice. It's usually a temporary deviation from anything that could be considered a reasonable daily practice. Like we read a book and it's like, this is what I'm going to do for the next 90 days that I couldn't possibly do for my whole life. It could never become my daily practice. It's like if you know we said, well, regular exercise is a healthy daily practice, but for the next 90 days, I'm gonna abuse myself by you know, tying really tight knots around my arms and cutting off the circulation and hitting myself with a ruler. And I'm, but I'm only gonna do it for 90 days and then after that I'm just gonna like mellow out and, and live you know, more balanced. That's insanity, that's not an exercise regimen, that's self-abuse, but yet we call it a diet when it's not. It's, it's something that's completely unnatural that we do for some you know, temporary <laughs> period of time. Okay, so I'm being a little extreme here, but hopefully you get my point. Like, Anything you're doing that's dietary, and again, even the term dietary, it only means daily. It doesn't necessarily mean food. But if you're doing something in terms of food um, that's not something that's reasonably sustainable for the rest of your life, that could be a consistent daily practice, it's probably a symptom of your food struggle, not a resolution of your food struggle or you know, a food solution, so to speak. So what's really going on? Like, how did we get so screwed up around food? Something that a psychologist told me, so, and I'm not gonna say who because he's kind of a private guy and I don't think he wants the attention of me talking about him on YouTube, but I can tell you that he's a very, very credible, you know, really established uh, psychologist with multi, a multi-decade career and, you know, some accolades and just the kind of guy you should take this advice from. He basically told me, food issues are always, always, 100% about control. If you struggle to control yourself with food, then what you're actually doing is using food to gain a sense of control over some other aspect of your life where you either currently or in the past have felt out of control. Food is like the ultimate act, the way he explained it to me. And he explained it to me because I was in there going, 
man, I, I have so many other parts of my life together. Like I have a handle on, I even, I even go to the gym and work out, but I undo and then some all my potential progress because I just can't stop myself from, from really harming myself with food. And he said, food is the ultimate act of rebellion. It's the ultimate like F you to, um, I, can you make middle fingers on YouTube? I don't know, we'll, we'll see if the video gets banned, but it's the ultimate that to something else in your life that says, I wanna control you, I wanna tell you what you have to do, I wanna tell you who you have to be, I wanna tell you how you have to be, and you say, you know what, I'll be your way, but in this moment, right now, I'm gonna put this fatty, sugary, salty, toxic, whatever substance into my mouth on my taste buds and get my own rush and my own feelings and I'm gonna swallow it and it's gonna you know, corrode my body from the inside out and there's nothing you can do about it. Like nanny nanny boo boo. That's literally what overeating is or eating the wrong food is. Every time. When you look at it that way, it's like kind of changes, <laughs> changes the experience. I remember going home and like, it was, it was actually a really valuable revelation for him to share that with me because suddenly eating food did not feel so fun. It was like, man, I am, it's like being a kid. It's like, you know, sometimes I have, I have small kids and they do things where they say, you know, uh, well, you know, fine, if you, don't, if you don't let me do this, then I, you know, I won't pee on the potty or like whatever little immature toddler thing is happening. And you're like, well, that's not hurting me. That's just hurting you. Kids sometimes do things in, in an act of defiance that actually only hurt them. That's what we're doing with food. We're saying you know, to the world, screw you, I'll show you by screwing myself. Doesn't make a ton of sense, but in our you know, subconscious brain, there's like some sick logic to it. But if you understand it and you stop trying to, to view it through some other lens, it's not about hunger. You know, hunger is about two chemicals in the body, ghrelin and leptin. And I promise you, it's not a ghrelin and leptin issue that has you at your fridge eating raw cookie dough by the tub at one o'clock in the morning. It's a control thing. It's not a like biochemical thing. And when you understand that, you can actually start to deal with it. You can start to find like, what are the real places in my life where I feel out of control? And this is the thing. This is, this is why it's, it's terrifying for a lot of people to actually deal with food issues. Because the only way you deal with food issues or you deal with life issues that you've literally been burying with food. This is why most people that lose a lot of weight, uh, if, you know, if they're in, a, in a, a committed relationship or they have a marriage, like the vast majority of relationships where somebody loses 100 pounds or more end up in divorce because that one person, you can't, you can't overcome an issue with food and still be the same person that you were. And that's so a lot of times it becomes self-fulfilling. It's like, well, I'm scared to change because I'll rock the boat on some of my key relationships in life because people like me the way I am or they're you know, looped into some kind of codependency or that somehow they benefit from me staying stuck. So in order to make sure that I don't change and in order to deal with the anxiety of what would happen to that relationship if I did change, I will eat to bury that feeling too and it becomes this self-reinforcing situation, right? With, that's you know, based on relationship dynamics. Um, so here's... You know, again, as somebody who's practically dealt with this, first of all, it was you know, getting out of denial, so, that, so to speak, right? Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. Like, this is what's happening. When you're eating, you're really doing this. So now, how can I practically deal with it? And food is a really difficult thing because you can't cold turkey food. Like, there's, if, you're, if you're an alcoholic, just don't go to a bar and don't drink. That's my prescription for you. But I can't say if you're a food addict or if you struggle with food or you, or you have emotional eating, or you, you, know, you use food for control, I can't say, well, just stop eating, right? That clearly will die. Here's how I've dealt with this practically, and I've gotten a lot of traction out of it, is I used to focus on creating different food practices. Like I need to, instead of eating this, I need to eat this. Instead of craving this, I need to somehow rewire my craving for this. Or instead of eating at this time, I need to eat at this time. It was all around changing my behavior with food. And that was always like the yo-yo result. I would get some traction, but it was like a, it was a force of willpower and willpower eventually exhausts itself because you got other things going on and then you regress and you recoil and now you snap back and it's worse than it was before because now you have the guilt and shame of like, well, I tried and it didn't work, so I'm a hopeless loser, right? So when I changed my model for dealing with food from instead of trying to create new food practices, I'm gonna focus on creating food systems. And this honestly came from 
you know, my work as a, as a marketer and an entrepreneur where it was like system, 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 S-Y-S-T-E-M, save yourself time, energy, and money. Say, you know, you, they drill this into you like when you get into digital marketing and, you know, internet-based entrepreneurship. And I was like, why don't I focus on, on systematizing my food in the same way that I've systematized my business? Because I coach people all the time in business. You know, it's, it's not about focusing on different things or, you know, because like when you start a business, you have this sense of overwhelm, right? Like I have a million things I got to do. I, let's say an internet business. I got to create content. I got to check my funnel. I got to build my funnel. I got to write my copy. I got to shoot my videos. I got to track my, my conversions. I got to source my products. I got to manage fulfillment. I got to deal with customer service. I got to deal with chargebacks and refunds and you know, payment processing. And I got ah, this giant list of things to do. You don't, it's not about picking and choosing which things you focus on. It's about spending your time creating systems that you know, allow you to essentially integrate and automate the management of all of those things at once, right? Let's do the same thing with food. And so what I found is the more I focused on structuring my life so that, food, first of all, the, you know, one of the big breakthroughs was the, the realization that like we don't actually need to eat nearly as much as we think. And I, I, you know, this isn't like a workout or fitness or training video, but I will simply share that I used to work out really hard and I used to eat like six or seven meals a day and I would start eating as soon as I woke up and I would you know, eat almost into late at night and sometimes I would even wake up and have a snack. And I thought that like, the best, you know, fitness-based eating regimen was around eating a lot. And, you know, they talk about meal frequency. It's kind of like the classic bodybuilding model. What I realized is my life was still just as controlled by food doing that. That was a reactive response. That was trying to create a, an extreme food practice to compensate for a different extreme food practice. So the big realization, and, you know, you can study intermittent fasting on your own, but like, the, there's only one rule, and we'll talk about the one rule, but the one rule is basically calories in, calories out. And as much as people want to talk about how, you know, the timing of your eating and how your body handles different nutrients at different times of the day and in different proportions and different ratios, at the end of the day, if, you're, if you have an active body and you're doing, you know, resistance exercise and also some cardiovascular exercise, your body is a pretty amazing machine at taking whatever nutrients you give it and like there's processes, you know, like gluconeogenesis, for example, it converts protein into carbs uh, or converts protein into glucose, which is what you, the same reason you eat carbs is to get glucose, right? There's ketosis, which turns fat into ketones that your brain can actually burn for fuel, just like it would in the absence or just like it would glucose. And it can do that in the absence of glucose. Um, or you can use carbs for fuel, but at the end of the day, it's all gonna come down to calories in and calories out. With the somewhat exception of making sure you eat enough protein, your body composition is basically gonna be the same. Whether you eat 2,000 calories of meat and vegetables, you know, let's say 1,000 calories at noon and 1,000 calories at three o'clock, or you eat five 400 calorie meals spread out throughout the day, um, you know, unless you're doing really dramatically destructive things with your blood sugar that actually significantly alter your metabolism throughout the day, it's basically one simple math formula that's like, be active, um, don't eat total processed garbage, and have a rough idea of how many calories are coming in, how many calories are going out. And that's it. That's enough science for most people to manage their food life and to build effective systems, effective food systems. So, this right here is basically how I personally dealt with my food struggles. It was, okay, I need to create a daily practice that's systems-based. So I, do, I deal with things like you know, meal prep. I remove the decision-making process from food. You know, there's something we call decision fatigue. Basically, anytime you have to make a decision around something, you run the risk of making a bad decision around something. And the more decisions you have to make, the lower, the, the more your decisions tend to degrade over time. So just eliminate the decisions around food. Systematize it. Figure out at the beginning of the week what you're going to eat and how you're going to have it prepared, how you're going to prepare it as efficiently as possible, how you're going to have it on hand, what, you know, snacks or supplements, and just essentially create a, build a system so that every time, because food practices are based around consistently making lots of different decisions. But the premise of consistently making lots of different decisions is flawed because Consistently making any kind of decision is prone to failure. Eliminate the decisions by creating a system and build that system on the one rule and then deal with your life in terms of control 
so that you won't be tempted to deviate from this system but with these erroneous efforts. I don't know if erroneous is the word I was trying to use, but basically these, these flawed efforts at trying to control through food. That's it. That's your life. That's all you have to do to deal with food struggles. And I realized that, you know, that sounds simple. It took me years to really dial it in, but after lots of fits and starts and struggles and frustrations, I can say that this approach is the only approach I've gotten traction with. And it's been several years, I want to say about three years, and literally food has not been a struggle in my life. It's not something, it's not a struggle that I've managed. It's not a, you know, we, t we think a lot about the, the, the paradigm of addiction, like you're always sick and you're always battling and every day is a fight and you have to win the fight every day. Literally this has removed that fight from my life. Now it's just a process. It's like waking up, showering, shaving, brushing my teeth and participating in the food system of my life. Okay, hey, hope that helps. Uh, you know, again, my, my channel, if you're like, okay, now he's talking about food, but yesterday he was talking about internet business, before that he was talking about what books I should read, before that he was talking about, you know, how rich people think about money. It's all about one thing. I wanna help you have a more awesome life. If you're into that, subscribe to my channel. And if you're not into that, I would, why aren't you into that? But hey, assuming you are, subscribe to my channel, make sure you click the bell uh, to get notifications when I post new videos. And every day I'll be coming to you with more talk about how to have an awesome life. Thanks for your time.